four, three, two, one. Da, da, da. I think we need like a giant vegetable that I set up and I come bursting through like in a sporting event and I just burst through and I trip and I fall and I get back up and everyone cheers. We have to have some sort of like a, I don't know, just like a sound of cheering, I think. Mary Eve's clapping for you. Oh, so. thanks, Mary Eve. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, who, or just like a a DDF. This is like DDF, and I just like dive through the D, the first D, not the second D, because there's nothing there. <laughs> DDF, of course, Debbie Dream Foundation. Uh, we are here cooking again. Some of you may be new. Some of you may be our longtime friends, through friends that we know. Uh, and some of you could be on a completely different continent, which is very exciting for me, because I always love knowing how far, uh, but yet how close a family we all are, and we're all kind of coming from somewhere. Where are we? Well, we are in Austin, Texas, where it is kind of warm and muggy. I also know that someone else who's here, one of the most important people, which is Mary E. Brown, clinical oncology dietitian specialist at John Hopkins Kimmel Cancer Center. It's quite a mouthful, but... She's like the magic eight ball with information. And every time you ask a question, a different answer, the correct answer comes up. I know that Mary Brown, you had said, uh, Mary Brown, you had said that where you are, the weather is perfect and sunny. So where are you, Mary Eve? And uh, how are you doing? I'm great, chef. So good to see you. Yep. So I'm <laughs> north of Baltimore. It's um, the high 60s, no humidity. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend. I'm so excited for that. And I'm excited for spring and summer. And I'm excited for our event today. It is right between spring and summer, isn't it? Here in Austin, Texas, it could hit triple digits. Last year, it was gloomy and like nasty, but not bad, not bad, I'll take it. Uh, and it seems to be really great in California where most of, our, most of our food is grown, but then come late spring and summertime where we are now, farmer's markets start opening up all over the US. And that's where I think we should go. We should start with some really good, lovely seasonality as far as cooking, but let's say you have a question. It could happen. I could stop talking for a half a second so that you can ask the question. It's not going to happen. I'm the youngest of three boys. Who am I? <laughs> Who are any of us, really, when we really think about it deep down? My name is Nathan Lyon. I will curtsy. It's a pleasure. I'm the youngest of three boys. Therefore, I love attention. Those of you that are the youngest, you totally get it. Yeah. And those of you that are the oldest, you're like, oh, yeah, he's the youngest. I get it. Right. Uh, my background is in health sciences. I earned a health science degree from James Madison University with a public health minor. I went to UCLA Extension to complete a course to become a medical technician. And then I was like, nope. Then I decided to go to La Corte Bleu, North America to become a cook. In the last 15 years, I've been cooking on television and I worked at farmer's markets for over 10 years and I have a seasonal cookbook and I'm a uh, Pisces. So start saving up birthday, <laughs> February 25th. But let's say, back to that question thing, it's possible. If you have a question, either for myself or Mary Eve Brown, just go ahead and type it in and your Facebook thing. And then this voice. Good afternoon. That is good Sarah, morning. Sarah Foreman. She is my better half, both in life and in practice. We, we already have, we have some people. We have Melanie from New Jersey. We have Kim from Ohio. Welcome, welcome. I love it. Back to Ohio. Jersey, good weather, great tomatoes, can't wait. Okay, I-95, I'm from Arlington, Virginia, I may have mentioned that, so I'm all up and down the I-95 quarter. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing today? Well, we're gonna cook some really fun stuff, mostly spring things, so this is spring. When you eat in season, it's the tastiest, right? It costs the least, which is a bonus, and it has the most nutrition, so I always advocate, always uh, cooking in season, okay? So, one of the things we're going to make is, well, today it's a salmon dish. And the reason I got a salmon dish is because I couldn't find a different type of fish that I was looking for. The Arctic char? Arctic char. It was um, today, literally there yesterday, but I got a little, a little too late. The last evening, they already sold out. When I get fresh fish or fresh seafood of any kind, I make sure it's, a, it's like wrapped up in plastic or uh, you have a couple of plastic bags of ice in the fridge, so ice in the bottom, seafood in the middle, ice on top, cook it that day or the following day, and that's it, okay? You want to eat fresh, really fresh fish. What I did, just to show you, what I did with this salmon, it's a smaller salmon on the tail side, 
is I rinsed it with very, very cold water and I pat it dry. So that's where I am right now. If you go to the grocery store and you're like, oh, can I, can I smell that fish? I totally recommend you do exactly that. I need some fish. Let me smell it. Doesn't smell like smell. It smells right. a little bit like fishy. Don't worry, because that's okay too. Because if you've ever been fishing and you catch a fish, by the time you get your boat back in, it smells like fish. Not a problem. That's when you rinse it with cold water, pat it dry, bottles your uncle, you're good to go. Okay. We have Nancy Brown joining us from Washington State. Washington State. So, Where well, salmon well, comes from. Exactly. <laughs> that's true. That's, She's right on cue. That's true. And if you go a little bit further up north, up to uh, Cordova, you get some really lovely salmon that I guess the first day, opening day was just last week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is salmon season now. So is this is a really good point. You don't want to buy any other than Pacific Northwest wild caught. The nutritional content of that is superior over something that's farm and from another part of the world. For sure. I mean, human beings, we threw salmon in south of the uh, south of the planet. They don't belong there, but they're there now. What are you going to do? The farms. The farms. Yeah, the farms. Yep. You're exactly right. Yeah, they're just dark. They're just beautiful dark color. Uh, and we'll talk about that as far as the differences of cooking, okay, between fresh, fresh caught and, uh, and farm salmon as well. Welcome, Patricia from Philadelphia. We are all over the East Coast and, of course, Northwest. And we're, we're smack dab in the middle here in Austin, Texas. So one of the things I want to do is, is do a little sheet tray, sheet pan dinner lunch could be a lunch okay make it super duper easy on the people so what i've done thus far is i have my oven set at 425 top rack rack in the very top setting okay because the heat will come from the bottom the top will keep that heat and we're going to get a little bit of color color on what well color on this pasty skin stop it no we're going to get a little color on some of these potatoes okay these are just Yellow potatoes. I like to get organic if possible because potatoes have a tendency to be sprayed with like non sprouting, non growing, non whatever stuff. Um, and I really love this type of potato because it's, it's not super starchy, uh, you know, like a red potato would be, and it's not super dry like a russet. It has like a natural buttery flavor, and I just love them. Okay. So I have a, a small dice on this. What does it look like specifically? This is the potato. That I'm talking about. Yukon okay? gold. Yeah, Yukon gold. Is it Yukon gold? Yeah. Which are, which are great. If you can't eat the skins, what I like to do is give them, you know, give them a quick feel. Thank you, Chef, for that. Of course. <laughs> you've <laughs> learned you've learned something over the time. <laughs> Listen, my my uh license plate says magic eight ball, and that's just after <laughs> you. You'll see it when I pick you up when we're on the road. Have we worked on that? Our natural <laughs> road trip. It's going to be so cool. The Mary Eve mobile. <laughs> just, just wrap that whole 18 wheeler and just rip through. So take the skins off. You can't have the skins. Compost these bad boys. I always like to have a, a little bowl off to the side whenever I'm preparing really anything because more times than not, your trash can or compost is somewhere in like not right next to you. And I see a lot of people when I go to their homes and watch how they cook. To sort of streamline, they grab this and they just start like walking over and they, they drop everything. I mean, half the time you're pushing the dog away, you're like, don't eat that. Long story short. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel it first. Then the easiest thing to do to make sure you don't cut yourself is, you know, these are sort of oblong. It's a potato, it's a potato shape. So what I like to do is just take a teeny thin slice right off the bottom, and then it's not going anywhere. Okay, it's a lot safer that way. And then what I'll do is I'll slice like quarter inch slices and try to uh, make it more uniform in size. And when I was in culinary school, potatoes are the thing that we use to practice our knife skills. And why is that? Well, they don't cost very much. And at the end of all your knife training, your skills, you've got different size portions and different chunks here and there. Put them in some boiling water and get yourself some mashed potatoes. It's really a very easy thing. The um, the price of entrance isn't very expensive, and just go ahead and bang them out. And they so, won't make your eyes water like onions. And they won't make your <laughs> eyes like onions. You know this is true. Did you come up with that? Did someone else write that in there? I thought you told me that. This is this is Sarah. Man, you're all over it. 
<laughs> hey, <laughs> chef, chef, could you also like collect all your scraps and like stick them in the freezer? And then when you have enough, they could be used as a stock, like making. I wouldn't go. It's a great thing. If you're talking about root vegetables. Yes. Even though dinner is a root vegetable. The difference is these have a lot of starch. So uh, if, you've ever, if you've ever, you know, um, like soaked potatoes um, in water and then you drain them, there's, that, there's literally starch in the bottom of the bowl that you can see. And the thing about the, the skins is they'll give like a starch meat flavor to your stock. Like it'll have like a little coating in your tongue. Yeah. You think about like... Um, you know, onions or uh, or carrots. Carrot, yeah, Those celery, yeah. Those types of things don't have a lot of starch in them, unlike the potatoes. But yeah, I mean, they make great compost. So I'm always about that. This, if you've been with us before, with Mary, Brian, and I, this is great. It's like six dollars and seventy-five cents. It's a bench scraper, so you can get everything into the bowl at once. It's a lot better than doing this twenty-two times when you've got a tiny little thin knife. My sister Victoria's favorite tool is the screen. Really, and most of it you bake. You know, it's really, really easy to manipulate stuff. And I also like a big cutting board. As you can see, there's a big cutting board. So if I had carrots here and some fish there, and I can really utilize the whole space without having 15 bowls lined up around me. All right. So I've got my potatoes. I did, I've cut a few potatoes in my day. Maybe. Yeah. So what I need now is a little bit of olive oil. If I put the potatoes on this sheet pan behind me in this oven at 425, they would just steam. It wouldn't get a lot of color on them, okay? Steam is only 212, so I needed to get higher than that. I wanted to go closer to 425. Oil allows vegetables to do that, to absorb more heat and pop that heat up and get some caramelization. So I'll do a little drizzle with some olive oil, right? Olive oil goes in. A little bit of salt and pepper. I like to use kosher salt. I don't use iodized salt unless I need to gargle, in which case, yeah, iodized is great. Or if I move back to Virginia, it's the middle of winter and I get an ice storm, sure, iodized is great, but I don't like to use it in cooking, okay? And as you saw when I season really anything, you can have whatever flavor you want. You could use a hat and just really knock it out and, and season from really high up so that everything gets evenly seasoned with salt. Pepper, of course, freshly ground. Do yourself a favor and get a pepper grinder, whether it's the one you buy that already has the pepper in it or otherwise, just because it's going to make your life a lot easier. And if it's a McCormick's, you know, the, the red oh, and white nice, McCormick's. Mary Eve. Oh, beautiful, beautiful wood one. Oh, I thought I thought you were showing a McCormick's that your mom gave you when you graduated college <laughs> that you still had because it's like a pound of already pre-graded. <laughs> pre -graded. That it's it's like one of those pepper grinders at the Italian restaurant. Okay. They say, like yes. a on the big table, you're like pepper, sure. Everyone goes like that. <laughs> yeah. it's like, Tell us when. <laughs> well, okay. That's where you get the really fresh volatile oils that are in it, right? You do. And you know, if you know anything about me, you know I love coffee a lot. If you like coffee, think of it this way. Freshly ground coffee is amazing. Freshly ground spices are also amazing. If you don't have freshly ground pepper and you're using one that, pepper that's already ground, you just don't know how old that is. So this is your penis. It'll be fun. Okay, we'll check back in in a few months in, in, uh, in August. Is go out, get some coffee, grind it, and then put it in your cabinet for three and a half to four years. And then in four years, bring that ground coffee out and make yourself a... Mm, Delicious fresh cup of coffee. <laughs> All of the volatile oils are gone. They're just dust. They're dust in the wind. I feel, I'm feeling good about these musical references. <laughs> it's dust in the wind. It's the same thing as if you had, you know, fresh spices like cumin, coriander, things we're going to talk about in just a bit. I don't have any spices except for salt and pepper, olive oil, and potatoes. Yeah? 425, top rack. So it gets all that heat, try to get some caramelization. This is gonna go in now, okay? Try to get some color on that. Is it the only thing that goes in? No, we're gonna do some fish, some fresh fish. Uh, salmon season has just opened, Cordova, uh, Alaska. If you can get some wild salmon, it's amazing. It's just so dark and it's just exponentially uh, more nutritious than farm salmon. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's how that goes. We're gonna not just use just the same. We're gonna add our own little douche, our own little. This is a new move for me. I like it. Our own little kind of T-Rexy or like such a. I don't know what that Michael that's Jackson that. thriller. Oh yeah. <laughs> or somehow, but I'm gonna make a spice rub. And we're gonna do sort of like continue on the coattails of freshly ground pepper, fresh coffee, fresh spices. These are all oil-based spices, okay? So I'm gonna start with paprika or paprika, depends upon where you're from. I'm gonna go with two teaspoons of paprika. We're not, we may not use all of this, so it's, it's nice you'll have a little bit left over if you feel like using it on some vegetables or some more fish in the future, right? So a little bit of paprika. I have coriander right here, some coriander, just in case you're wondering, these glass containers that clearly last forever, I just go out and I get fresh and I just refill. I just keep refilling these glass containers. They last a long time. Plastic ones I find, they just don't hold up as well. And they seem to absorb a little bit of spice. Coriander is so lovely because it has like a, a floral quality to it, which I love. I also have some cumin and some fennel. The top says cinnamon sticks and cayenne pepper. So if you're, <laughs> top, if you're looking at it from the top, you're screwed. I need to come organize your spices. I, I mean, they're organized, just, Sarah. Not, just not from the top. <laughs> and then fennel, one teaspoon, <laughs> cumin, half a teaspoon. If you really, really like cumin, yeah, go for more, a whole teaspoon. This is really, this is really your own, okay? And one of the things that I, I try to really say is, you, you got to just sort of be playful. If you don't have coriander, does that mean you can't make this whole recipe? Of course not. Just double up on the fennel or triple up on the cumin, okay? So the, the choice is yours. I do need salt and pepper. I haven't, I haven't salted or peppered the salmon just yet. I'm going to go ahead and do two teaspoons of kosher salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And then this is my homemade spice rub. You just made it in seconds. Just seconds, okay? Doesn't take much effort. Let's give it a little rub. I have a question for Mary Eve, um, okay. which um, you're gonna rub that on the, the salmon? Yes, of course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle it over top of just the flesh side. The skin is on. We'll peel that off after it's cooked, but I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top, okay? Great question. Great. So for Mary Eve, I am in chemotherapy for my stomach cancer and having a hard time keeping my blood counts in a good place. I want to keep my treatment on track, but I've been told I might have to delay my chemo if my counts are not good. Any ideas for foods that help with blood counts? So that's directly related to the chemotherapy. Um, you know, chemotherapy is killing bad cells, also killing some good cells, and the marrow cells are the ones that can be affected along with the gut cells. So um, the building blocks of healthy cells is protein, so the salmon. Um, so you want to make sure that you're meeting your protein needs and you want to eat protein every time you eat. There's about a 30 gram cap at a time that the body will use for that cell growth. So if you're, it, I have people say, oh, I'm drinking a 45 gram protein shake. I'm like, ah, 30 is to use 15, not, not so much. So you want to space it through the day. Um, so eggs, yogurt, cheese, salmon, chicken. Um, so dairy, plant-based proteins, if you can do them as well, beans and nut butters and, and, and seeds. The other is you want to eat a variety of, of foods, um, because there are properties that are in foods that can also help with regenerating healthy cells. So it's a wide variety of things, but really focusing on getting enough protein in, um, aside that I wanted to say, I, I think I answered that. The other thing I wanted to say about um, salmon is it's the omega-3s in them, which are anti-inflammatory. And that's why you want to try to eat two to three servings of some type of fatty fish each week if you can. And salmon tends to be one that's really um, well tolerated for people with treatment um, post-gastrectomy. Salmon's you know, easy, easy to digest. I find that most people have, that they've had a bad experience with it. It was because it was overcooked. And I don't know if chef's going to talk about that or not, but I think people are afraid of cooking it at home because they've overcooked it and then it's dry and it's not, you know, not really, um, very, very appealing. So and I'm sure chef's going to talk about that. Definitely. Yeah. I can talk about salmon all day. The thing about, the thing about fish is you're exactly right. Americans, in general, it's just what we do. We have a tendency to overcook everything. 
And the thing about salmon, things that have a lot of fatty acids in them, is when you when you overcook it, that's when the, the volatile oils, if you will, get airborne. Okay. Grilling is one of the worst things you can do to a salmon. It's just way too high of a heat. That's just direct heat. I don't want to do that. Even though it's set for 425, it's still not super duper hot when you think about it. I can put my arm in a 425 degree oven for a couple seconds, but I cannot put my hand in boiling water and that's 200 degrees less in temperature. So it just has to do with how that heat is transferred. So just don't overcook the salmon. If you are worried about, if you really love salmon, you're not really sure how to cook it, I would invest in a, a sous vide. It's an emergent circulator. And you just put it, the salmon with a little olive oil, whatever spices you want in a plastic bag, you get all the air out, you put it in water. And the emergent circulator is like a hot tub for the salmon or vegetables or steak or whatever you want cooked perfectly. Or you can try this little old recipe behind me and give it a shot, okay? It's not- There's another option. There's another option. It's another option. It's it's got the same shape as Mary Eve's favorite. What is this? Stop it. It's the same shape as this. It's just that instead of the blender, it has a little heating apparatus and it heats it up. Okay. Like my grandmother with her feet and those little heating things. What do you call those? Like a little plastic foot bath. They're so cool. I'm getting off topic. I get it. Yeah, you don't know? put your salmon in a foot bath. Don't overcook your feet. Please. Don't overcook your salmon. And that's really it. It's the same thing. Don't overcook your chicken. Don't overcook your steak. People say, Nathan, how do I not overcook my salmon? The answer is don't overcook your salmon. It sounds like a really simple, <laughs> I love you card. Just don't overcook your salmon, okay? How do you know? Great question. Thermometer. I'm going to use this today. Salmon and steak are the same temperature for me. I love a medium rare steak, and I love salmon. That's just to the point where it cleaves apart and is still buttery and moist and succulent. That's 125 degrees. In culinary school, they're like, you have to... The way to figure it out is you grab your left earlobe and you put your pinky on your thing, you touch the fish with your elbow and then you put your knee up. That's not how you do it. I mean, not, not anymore. You just use technology. So when I open up the oven and I put this little probe in the deepest part of the salmon, 125, it's done. Okay, really simple. Nancy asked what temperature and how long in the sous vide. So 125 would be a good temperature for the sous vide. That's exactly right. So with the salmon, you set it to 125 and you can never overcook the salmon. It will never go beyond 125. And if you go out and take the dog for a walk for a half an hour, it doesn't matter because it will never go over a perfect medium rare. Simple, yeah? Uh, Melanie simple. says, living without a stomach now for 14 years because of stage four stomach cancer and salmon is one of my staple foods. Fantastic. Yes. Great to know. Awesome. 14 years, congratulations. Wow. Wow. You know, I got involved um, with Debbie's Green Foundation because of a very good friend of mine as a chef without a stomach, Hans Rupert. And love that guy. He just sent me a text by two nights ago. He's got really dark humor. He is so funny. He keeps me laughing <laughs> up a storm. He's probably uh, pr probably close to that. Yeah. yeah. 12, 13 years, something like that. And he's, if you ever want to travel with somebody and laugh, He's the guy to travel with <laughs> because he told me things and, and I did cadaver labs, told me things that, you know, he has to deal with on a daily basis. And so we always work together on how I can make these recipes a little more accessible to everyone involved that's watching here today. Okay. So let's talk about a salsa verde. It's a green sauce. If you are in Argentina, it's chimichurri. Same sort of thing, slightly different ingredients. If you're in Mexico, you would have like a tomatillo salsa or an avocado salsa. It's usually named after whatever that main vegetable or fruit is in the salsa. This is just a green. Or in sauce. Italy, it'd be pesto. This is more of an Italian or pesto, exactly. So this is more of like a somewhere between the boot of Italy and France, Mediterranean salsa. And it's really very go with the flow, okay? If you do not like cilantro and we or you are out there, a lot of people will say buy cilantro and put it directly in your compost bin. And that's the best use of cilantro. Buy like so. cilantro. <laughs> okay. It's true. People are like, yeah, buy it and then throw it away. It's disgusting. <laughs> Eat a bar of soap. It's disgusting. It's kind of bad. Okay. So we'll just pull your jets. If you don't like cilantro, you haven't had dill in the fridge, use dill instead of cilantro. If you have chives or tarragon, use those because I get it. Chefs like me say, go out and get a thing of herbs 
and you may you chop it, you get two tablespoons, you're left with a bunch of herbs. This is what you do. You make yourself a salsa verde. Green, and it's spring. Everything is green right now. And this is what we do. If you have a food processor, great. If you don't, not a problem. Use a blender. Don't have a blender, not a problem. Just go out, bed, bath, and beyond. It's probably not too late, 20% discount. <laughs> and get one of these jammies, right? And this is what it comes with. Yep, that's what I got. <laughs> that's exactly what I got. <laughs> this is not your food processor. And if you don't have one of these, then just, just this is your food processor, okay? And if you don't have any of those, you know what? We'll all pitch in and we'll send you, we'll send you one. Wherever you are, we'll just get you one, okay? Chop the bejesus. You just the chop the bejesus. Chop. Okay. Matt, speaking of um, Hans, Melanie says, I know Hans well, great guy. And I think he's 14 or 15 years without a stomach. Yeah, he's, he's, he's amazing. And, and one of the, one of the stories is we, we were doing, uh, uh, we were raising money. For, you know, he's, he's involved in so many different things. It's hard for me to actually wrap my mind around because he's a parent of three kids. He's a husband. He just gets so much done. It makes me feel like a lazy sack, to be honest with you. I love him, but I kind of hate him. Anyway. <laughs> So when we were we were staying in a hotel together, beds right next to each other, kind of giggling like schoolboys. And uh, he says, I need a lot of pillows. Let's go to the front desk. I need some pillows. And I was like, okay, cool. So we go down and get a bunch of pillows. And uh, and he says, because I can't lay flat. I don't have the anatomy that you have that keeps all my food down. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So in solidarity, I put a pillow behind my back. <laughs> And I sleep up a little bit. That's kind of a true story for my own reasons, but there you go. So what do I do here already? I'm talking too much, but TMI. I'm TMI. <laughs> um, garlic. I just pop the skin off. Garlic cloves go in there. Doesn't have to have it, but I like it. Capers. Lovely, mm. lovely. In the Mediterranean, off a little bush. They're delicious. They're, uh, I like them in brine because they're easier to work with uh, than salt. Find these in your local grocery store. Keep it in the fridge. That's my salt. I want a little extra flavor. I'm going fish on fish, if that's okay, with this crowd. It's an adult crowd. Fish on fish. Anchovy, anchovy paste. Anchovy has what's called umami. Same with mushroom, same with tomato paste, uh, same with steak. Everything that makes you salivate is very savory. If you don't want to, if you don't want to worry about that, like it looks just like this. But the anchovies, and you scoop them out of the olive oil, you're like, oh, kind of that. You can just get a little squirt to them. And make your own sound effect. Okay. My sound effect goes like this. Okay. Just it's very cartoon esque. I don't know how I got there, but I did. And it's really easy. Just keep it in the fridge and you're done. If you don't like anchovies, I think you should try it with a little bit of anchovy because if you do it right, it just makes you salivate and it's so satiating, but it shouldn't taste like anchovy. Okay. So I'm going to go with some aforementioned, or if you don't like, cilantro that is not to be mentioned the name to which no one should mention some cilantro the great thing about cilantro is the stems are very delicate you don't have to worry about like pulling them off the leaves the way you do with uh, parsley i'm going to shove that in there parsley i'm going with flat leaf italian parsley it's sort of redundant it will say either italian parsley or flat leaf i like to say both and then this one i'm going to choke up i'm going to choke way up I don't want these heavy stems. This is a little bit bitter, the flavor. Okay, I'm gonna be bitter. So I'm gonna choke way up and I'm gonna do one of these jabbies. All right, so that is all delicious. This is all compost. Okay, so that goes in. And like I said before, I know that I have a little bit of dill in the fridge. And if I have any salmon left over and I'm gonna go ahead and use this in a salad tomorrow, I'm gonna to add some dill in this and do like creme fraiche with some lentils. And there's an amazing salad using perfectly cooked salmon, okay? So I have my herbs, I have my spice rub, and that's already behind me. Uh, anchovies, garlic, I need a little bit of liquid, like a little bit of acidity, and I'm going in with red wine vinegar and lemon juice, okay? So lemons, I like the organic lemons, and if I'm gonna zest them for baking, I always zest them first because they're very difficult to zest. Once you cut them. <laughs> After you squeeze the juice out of them, for sure, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off just the end since I don't need a whole lot of juice. If you I know, need... Chef, the other thing about 
um, herbs is they are huge antioxidant properties to them. If you think about them, they're concentrated little plants. So having an herb garden, super duper easy. They're like weeds. You just need a sunny spot anywhere. So I have mine in pots and I move them around my deck. Um, and then you can just go out and snip them. And I think I've said this before a hundred times. And at the end of the season, I chop them all down and I throw them in the freezer. So all winter long, I've got fresh herbs, That's you right. know, in the, yeah, easy. That's right. And the thing is, it's also, it's pennies on the dollar from what you get at the grocery store. So the grocery store will have, you know, those little uh, plastic clamshells that go in a landfill. If you just go and buy a plant for like $1.75, you've got that plant that just gives all, all season long. And the so, more you use it, the more you cut it, the more it grows back. Mm -hmm. I think you're talking about my soul. I feel slightly cut, but I feel bigger. I don't know where I'm going with this. We are halfway through as far as cooking with the potatoes, okay? Now is the time I'm going to pull the potatoes out, and I'm putting the fish on top of the potatoes. And I'll show you how I want this done as well. You this can, little trick works. You can drop it on, on the... Uh... Okay, cool. You see that okay? Yeah. All right. So when you're baking anything, say cookies, fish, what have you, all of the heat comes up and envelops the sides of the sheet pan, okay? So the thicker part of the fish, I want pointing toward the corners or closer to the corners. So this piece of salmon, this belly portion Make, is thin. This is the thicker part. Make sure you're talking towards oh, gotcha. the corner. This is the thicker part. This goes toward the corner. The thinner part goes toward the middle, okay? And then it goes back in, and we'll continue cooking this until it's perfectly done, okay? Ah, ah, done. There we go. Okay, so there's only one other thing you didn't see me put inside the salsa verde, a little bit of red wine vinegar. We're going to go in maybe a half of a teaspoon, okay? Then we can always adjust it from there. What I want to do is create a little bit of friction. If I added olive oil right now to this whole contraption and I blitzed it, the olive oil would actually inhibit the ability for it to sort of grind together. I want it to weed whack the heck out of itself. I want it to get really smushed up. Grab yourself a spatula or a spatula, depending upon if you're my father or not. Chances are you're not. <laughs> Go ahead and lift this up. <laughs> To the point where if you're on your first date, it's embarrassing how much green you have stuck in your teeth. That's usually a good indication, okay? Once it stops moving, that's where I'll scrape around. You can kind of hear it, but now it's just the blade. It's not really doing anything. I'll stop. I'll scrape down the sides. And like I said, if you have a blender, this works. You can do the exact same thing. Great use of all those extra herbs that you have growing in your garden or in the refrigerator where you're like, what am I doing with this? Lift it down a couple more times. Okay, not bad. I'll scrape it down one more time. It's almost like the same way you're baking a, a cake. Do you have to scrape down every time you add an egg, Nathan? You do, you have to scrape down every time you add the egg when you're baking, you just do, okay? That goes in. Now we're gonna add the olive oil, okay? I'm gonna add the olive oil and I'm gonna blitz it for maybe five seconds, maybe. If you have a blender and you're using a blender, you don't wanna go more than five seconds. And the reason why is because olive oil will oxidize if you really whip a lot of air into it, you're whipping oxygen into it, and it makes it a little bit bitter, slightly off taste. So in this case, less is actually more. I'm gonna blitz it up. So it comes together. Okay, that's it. We're done. That's what we're doing. So while you transfer that into that bowl, yes. I have a question for Mary Eve. Oh, great. Okay, let me just cue this up. Uh, I am six weeks from having my total gastrectomy and feeling pretty good. I was told when I was discharged, I needed to follow a gastrectomy diet. I have been doing this, but no one told me for how long. Mm. Can I start to incorporate more foods? Really miss eating salads. So six weeks uh, post-surgery. I usually recommend for my patients um, at like two to three months. So maybe a couple more weeks 
to start advancing um, the diet. Certain things are going to remain pretty constant for most people, but not all people like eating and drinking at the same time can be difficult. Um, doing things that have a lot of sugar in them can sometimes be difficult. Dairy can sometimes be difficult, but a lot of people after a period of time can eat all foods. So when moving from kind of this gastrectomy kind of thing and incorporating more foods, you add one food at a time and separate it by a day. So if I want to have, I'm going to make this up. Um, you know, I want to have, you know, cooked broccoli. Okay. Well, I'm just going to have a small portion of the cooked broccoli, but nothing else new in that day. That way you'll know, oh, if I get gas or peen, okay, it's not, I'm not ready for that yet. And then slowly over time, you know, add more things in and then you'll know what's okay, what's not okay. But then always go back to those no, not okay later on to test yourself again. It's really interesting. Um, I find that when people are tall, I don't know why this is, but when people are tall, sometimes they can tolerate more things than people who are a little bit smaller. And I just think that's kind of an anatomy kind of thing. But if you've had a total gastrectomy over time, you can start, like I had a lady last night, she had her surgery um, in February and she was actually discharged on a liquid diet and, and IV nutrition anyways, but she's been doing the liquids and we started to advance her and she wasn't doing well. But last night she feels that she's ready to start with like pureed. And I said a quarter of a cup and she said, no, too much. So we're starting with tablespoons. And then over time, it may became two tablespoons, then a quarter of a cup, then a half of a cup. Over time, the body adapts. So start one food at a time, separate it by a day and start with a very small portion. Baby steps, you know, it's, it's baby steps. Baby steps. Yeah, it is. It's baby steps. It's a huge thing. And sometimes you can have, at least for, for me as, as a chef, sometimes, like I said, less is more. <clears throat> and um, which is a lovely segue to this particular appetizer. Not a lot of ingredients. In fact, there's only three, one of which is salt. It's a super easy appetizer. Um, it's a dairy smorgasbord of delight. Mm -hmm. This is brie. It's, it's, a, it's an eight ounce wheel of brie. And this is like, if you have friends over who are thinking or you know, kids or neighbors that are just like jonesing and they're looking through your cabinets and you're not ready to have them over. This is one of the things that's just ready and super duper fast. You can have it ready in probably eight minutes. All I've done is I've taken this small wheel, eight ounce wheel of brie and I've cut it into eight pieces, okay? So this, this appetizer feels like a magic trick. It feels like a Mary Eve Brown. I'm gonna pull out a Mary Eve Brown on this. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, uh, a cup and a quarter of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna eyeball this bad boy. Okay, this goes in first, it doesn't stick in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and put these slices, if you will, of brie in here. And the reason why I slice it is because I'm gonna allow a little bit of the hot cream to get between each of the slices. Or else it's just like one large piece. It's like the same with vegetables or same with you know animal proteins where you have one big piece, it's a lot easier to, to simply break it down so it cooks more uniformly. A tuck of salt, right? And then we're off to the races. So I'm gonna put this over medium heat. I'm gonna put this in front of the front of this uh, camera so you can see what's going on here. Medium, that's like medium, medium low, depending. Okay, there we go. The great thing about this recipe is you can sort of leave it alone for a little bit. If this were milk, you couldn't because everyone that's heated milk just one second is totally calm. It's just chilling, doing its own thing. Next minute, you're cleaning up your entire kitchen because it boils over. Cream, you can you can simmer and it's not going to break. So you have this extra fat from the brie, this flavor from the brie. The only thing that you will need other than a dream is a blender, okay? All we're doing now is we're heating up this brie to where it melts. I did not take the skin off the outside that people are likely to eat the skin. You absolutely eat the skin. You put the whole thing in there, but it's simmering down for a few minutes, a handful of minutes. You put the whole thing in a blender and you blitz it up until it's nice and smooth. And then you grab yourself some crudite. Okay. Whatever you feel, your family or yourself, whatever you can eat, whatever you can handle eating. That's what you go for. You could do rice crackers, you could do, you know, cucumbers that have no seeds and no skin, carrots, whatever you, you know, whatever you have on hand. Mary, you're so happy. Thank you. I'm telling you, Mary. You I'm, do listen. You do listen. And getting us prepped for our national tour, which is going to happen this fall. I'm ready. Going to bring our dogs. So, yeah. 
Are yeah. our cook, Mary Eve, our cook, our uh, raw carrots peeled okay, or is that tough? Um, in the beginning, no raw, mm -hmm. um, but over time, yeah, carrots should be okay. Like the cucumbers, um, seeds removed, skins removed. Yeah. And the thing is, with you know, carrots, it's like you know, even in restaurants, what we'll do is we'll do we'll do a lot of prep. So if we want to do a dish where it's cold crudite but cooked through, we'll go ahead and steam. Mm. roast all those vegetables and have them on you know just ready on offer and have this big crudite plate and a thing of you know burrata cheese on the side you don't have to do anything it's a lot easier to digest as well okay. i like the rice cracker idea too i think that's really smart because rice is the easiest food on the planet that we can digest yes. so i like that i think i think you came up with that last time i just oh. did. <laughs> how's okay. the how's the uh the three looking let me check Oh yeah, here we go. So we've got we've got movement, we've got a little bit of movement happening here in the corners. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time because I know that the cheese itself isn't quite there yet. And I have a little uh, bowl off to the side that's ready. That's ready to receive the, the blended three. Will it okay. look like um, completely melted and that's when you know it's ready? You know, it doesn't have to go quite that far, but you do go ahead and give it a little poke with uh, with a with a tiny little spatula or a fork or something like that. You know, everyone knows what, what the softened, softened cheese is. You could just really, you know, just break into a lot, a lot, a lot of pieces and it'll go faster. There we go. And like I said, it's okay if there's some bubbles around the edge because it's not gonna break. If this were milk or half and half, it would just look like ricotta because it's not meant for that type of high heat. And then when that's good, you're good to go, okay? One of the other things that we have in store for you today is a lemon buttermilk dressing. We're going from easy to easier to easiest. Lemon buttermilk dressing is like taking whatever, whatever you know, container that you got, whatever vegetables. This is like something you would find at a delivery if you guys get food delivery, or if you're an Emmy nominated chef. <laughs> True. You just grab one of these bad boys and they last forever. Doesn't, doesn't even plunder landfills. And super easy. Even while that thing's heating up, I'll just go ahead and show you, okay? Mason jar. I make all my dressings in mason jars. Mason jar. And, it, and what we're talking about, those of you that never made a dressing, you just put it in there and you shake the bejeevers out of it and that's your dressing. Super and they sell, they sell lids that are leak-proof now. They're awesome for mason jars. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Really? That's a game changer. Well, I'm wearing my nice shirt, so I feel pretty confident this is not going to fly off, but it does. It's one for the record, okay? okay? So this is what we'll need. We'll need a little bit of buttermilk, some yogurt, that lemon we were talking about earlier, which is great. Have everything ready. This is called mise en place, so it's like getting everything in its place. I just have a feeling that the breeze is probably warm enough, and I'll blitz it out, and we'll just go ahead and serve that up and be fast. You love buttermilk, chef. This is the second or third time I think you've used mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I, you know, I do. It's it's just like it's so delicious and it it just it doesn't it doesn't cost a lot. I mean, it's part of me growing up in a family with a lot of kids and not having a lot of money. It's just one of those things that you can make so much stuff on it because the pH of the butter milk makes it do a lot of things with baking. But Today, it's going to be like this lovely, like light tang. Mm. And the fact that this comes not from the buttermilk, but from the whole plain milk or yogurt. Okay. So, this is what I got I have a dream, a blender, and some brie. It's all going to go in here. Blitz it all up. Make sure that your guests are ready to eat, to scarf it down. Because what happens is as it cools over a longer period of time, it will start to stiffen up a little bit. Is that plugged in? It's not plugged in. There we go. You pour it out. You can put a few fresh herbs on it. Not necessary. You've got a lot of things ready. You're going to blitz it up. Okay? That's it. I mean... As far as the amount of seconds it takes to make this dish, we're doing pretty good. And that's it. We're done. I'm going to go ahead and serve that up. Look at that creamy, dreamy. Stop it. 
Mary Eve Brown, you stop it right now. That's delicious looking. <laughs> Why isn't that at my house right now? Exactly. Like, <laughs> is it, is, there's got to be a direct flight from Baltimore here to Austin. We can make this happen. I'll keep it warm. I'll keep it warm for you. Okay, so that's that's really it. I mean, when you look at this, and this sort of like, that is a television commercial in the making. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It's just so beautiful. And I'll tell you, it's just one of these things, and it looks like a lot, but when it coats, it coats everything nice and thick. For those of you that have uh, fruit, like apples, it's like a classic combination with brie. Peel the apple, that goes in there. It's just, it's just so darn good. I'm going to push this off the Sarah side. And okay. nourish and nourishing at the same time. I mean, that's that's protein, that's calcium. I mean, that's vitamins and minerals. I mean, that's that's a perfect, perfect dish. And well, thank you. And it just took, you know, however long it took to heat up the cream to soften the brie, and that's it. I will say this though, you want to make sure you get it all out of your blender and then wash it right away. It's one of these mm -hmm. things, like I said, if it gets super cold, it's gonna be a little slightly difficult to uh you know, it's like when you get a cheese plate, it's melted and you're like, oh, that's a little difficult to get off. But if it's still warm, you blitz it out and you're good to go. Back to this buttermilk dressing. So if you do the buttermilk dressing, then I have a, a question for Mary Eve. Okay. And your fish is one minute away. Fish is one minute away. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to get the other ingredients. <laughs> I'm not going to, listen, it's fish. It's just one of these things where you're like, oh. Makes me panic a little bit. Um, Nancy Brown um, dropped a link to a comprehensive patient resource packet of information from the NIH. So that is available on the in the Facebook comment box if anybody um, wants to click on that bookmark it. Um, so your dressing is butter. Mm -hmm. Okay, half a cup of buttermilk, a quarter cup of yogurt. I mean, I had some of this for breakfast this morning. This is the real deal. This is not fancy television stuff. This is literally what we have in our refrigerator. Okay. Okay. Buttermilk, whole milk yogurt. I like whole milk yogurt. It lasts a lot longer and you have all those lovely fat soluble vitamins, which is wonderful. A couple more things rice, wine, vinegar, lemon juice, salt, pepper, olive oil. Fish is ready. Do you like that? That was a fake frozen. Fish is ready. Okay. We'll see if it's ready because I've got this little jam. This is ready to go. Put it under the camera? Yeah. Okay. 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 It's like when you have hash browns in the morning and they're flavorful and they're soft and they're a little bit fatty, which is lovely. Feels like a all right, so that one is, can you see that? Um, yeah. 123, 124, there you go, 125. This is like magic. If, if Mary Brown was not here, it would be 600 degrees. I don't know how <laughs> it's possible, but it would be overcooked. It's perfectly cooked. I don't want to leave it on this hot plate because it will continue cooking the sand, right? So if you're going to serve it, you serve it now. Why don't you do a plate? And while you do that, I'm going to um, get a question ready for Mary Eve. Great. Perfect. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I am starting radiation therapy for my gastric cancer soon. I've had chemotherapy and this was very difficult for me. I figure radiation will be different than infusion therapy, but what should I expect? Yeah, so sometimes people think chemotherapy is harder than radiation therapy, but actually sometimes I find it's the reverse. So whenever you irradiate any part of the body that includes any part of the digestive system, you can have side effects. And so if you're irradiating, you know, your stomach, you could get, you know, esophagus in there, you could get small bowel in there. So it can cause lack of appetite, it can cause pain, it can cause nausea, it can cause um diarrhea. So, you know, partnering with an oncology dietitian, I think is super duper important because that person can navigate you to what foods to choose and what foods to stay away from, but also working with your health team. Um, do you need support medications? Do you need anti-nausea medications? Do you need, you know, anti-diarrheal medications? Keeping up with your hydration, super duper important. And we've talked about this before. You really want to do an oral rehydration drink, which is not a sport drink. So if you um, are drinking like Gatorade or Powerade or any of those kind of things that can actually make nausea and diarrhea worse. 
So if you have it with water, it then does become an oral rehydration drink. And um, sipping, not gulping, is really important. Small, frequent meals, you know, easy to digest things. So, you know, sadly, yes, um, you can have side effects similar to the chemotherapy um, whenever you're radiating any part of the gastrointestinal tract. No Gatorade for me. No Gatorade for anybody, actually. There we go. Uh, a little bit back. Oh, thank you. There we go. So the way that I serve this because we are coming down to, to our few minutes here, and I'll make sure that everyone has any questions about how to prepare them or how to cook them or, or also how to plate them. I like plating things. It's part of my sort of art background. I think it's really important. So when your guests arrive or you arrive because you're your own guest, you're like, wow, you know what? That was totally worth it. You want to put it under the camera on sure. the back. Yeah. That that's so all, that's and also I super important when somebody doesn't want to eat because like Chef just said, if it looks appealing and it looks um, delicious to me, it's going to be easier to eat it than if it's something that just doesn't look very appealing. So plating is, and it's huge. It is huge. This is one of the things that I like to do. It's called um, mirroring. So if you recall that sauce, the, the, the green salsa, the salsa verde we made, I like to put it on the bottom. And the reason for that is <clears throat> if you have something, you put it on the top, that means that if I covered this thing in salsa verde, every bite would have salsa verde. Maybe I just want the fish by itself and not with the green sauce. Maybe I want you know something else with the potatoes and then not the green sauce. So it allows me to put a little bit of sauce on the bottom so either I can scoop through and get the sauce with the potatoes and the fish or just the fish by itself. It's up to you, okay? And all of this magic happened in a blender and all in one sheet pan, okay? So now I'm gonna give this to Sarah. We have a big lunch here. I wish you would. I know, Mary. Oh. Eating my chance. I was thinking about you guys earlier this morning. I'm thinking, I'm thinking they're doing a whole bunch of prep right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's one of the things we actually enjoy about doing this. Cooking on television is fine, but there is a lot of stuff that's already done behind the scenes. I just want to make sure that you know everyone at home and around the world. You, know, you can just do this. This is real time. Right. Amazing. 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 And I haven't stopped talking. Imagine <laughs> how much you could accomplish if you just focused and got these things done. <laughs> you would have finished your dishes. You would be cleaned up and on to your next <laughs> thing. You would literally be on. The, I don't know what you do. Okay. So know that this is very easily done. Only thing I have in here is the buttermilk. Yeah. And the yogurt, which I had for breakfast this morning. I'm going to do a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Maybe two teaspoons. It's a is that seasoned or no? Is it is the rice wine vinegar seasoned? You know, if you if you can handle a little bit of sugar, do season to balance that out. But I find that it doesn't need it. We're out of the unseasoned. So what Mary was talking about is if you go get rice wine vinegar, you should probably get unseasoned. Seasoned simply means sugar. Right. So if you want to add some sugar to balance it out, you can always do that. You can't take the sugar out of it if you get the seasoned rice wine vinegar. Okay. So this one is seasoned, but it's just because we're out of unseasoned. But in the recipe, it should be unseasoned. Okay. So rice wine vinegar, which is very mild, it's not like a red wine vinegar or a white wine vinegar. It's just yep. a, like a well-rounded vinegar. But let's pop a little bit of um, lemon into it. We already know that I have a lemon on offer. You've already seen me slice up a little bit of that. I like lemon in a salad dressing because it just it just brightens it up. It has a fruit fruit forward thing going on. Um, I like to use my hands to catch any sort of seeds that are here. Okay, there are no seeds, so you're good to go. That goes in the compost, and then salt and pepper, olive oil, salt, maybe not even a quarter teaspoon, black pepper olive oil, just a tablespoon, if that. And again, this is more of a flavor thing because there isn't a fat to coat. We will put on this non-spill proof top. We will twist our fingers and toes. <laughs> this is my shirt. I don't know many of them, I'm a chef. Uh -oh, uh -oh, and you're done, okay? That's your dressing. So we have some lettuce, lovely lettuces. Spring is lettuce season. All the most beautiful, delicate lettuces come out right now. Okay. So here we go. Pick off a mixture of different lettuces, whatever you want. For your guests, 
We already know that we have some cucumbers. If you want to add some cucumbers in this, peel, of course. And seeded, and, of course. And, and seeded. And seeded. So we have a little bit of this in here. Greens are, lettuces like that are so easy to grow. So I, um, I get the, they're like the window box. I buy them at the dollar store. They're the like long oblong planters. I put rocks in the bottom of it, fill it with some really good organic dirt, put the seeds on it in seven to 10 days, you got microgreens mm. and then you can let them go and you can snip them. And I did spinach this year too. Um, yeah. Oh, and the reason I put them in the boxes is I can move them around, right? And I can hide them from all the bunnies I have in my backyard. Um, super easy. You know, if you're growing microgreens and you have bunnies, you should have me over. That sounds like a delicious meal. <laughs> okay. I, I don't cook bunnies. <laughs> fatal, attra fatal attraction just yeah, came right. in my head. <laughs> Hard to catch. So so that's called, that's don't there. boil a bunny. It's just going to overcook it. Okay. We've all learned that from that movie. So, my dot, my Dotson does not chase bunnies, so she's like, eh, "Go ahead." Neither does ours. He's like, "What is that?" I was like, "You're bred for bunnies. What are you doing?" So what I did, you saw me. I went ahead and grabbed a few fresh herbs, which is nice to have. Yes, yes. Basil. Put herbs in your salad. Yes. But they're already there. A little extra yes. pungent flavor, and then Sarah has this really lovely little thing, little pour stuff, and there you go. There's your wonderful, your wonderful salad. Or the salad dressing, you've got a couple of different options here. You know, you can have this lovely salad, you can have the crudite with the brie thing going on. We have the salmon, which Sarah is already eating. Lo lovely, lovely. I salad. know. <laughs> now, one of the things that does happen from time to time, uh, time usually gets away from us a little bit. I know that we have a dessert for those of you that have been with us for a long time. I think we did a chocolate pudding. This is a vanilla chai spice pudding. This is the one thing I did do ahead, just in case we ran out of time. Um, you put a bunch of ingredients in a pot, you stir it until it boils or simmers for a minute, and then that's it. That's essentially the same thing you would get in the box, you know, with somebody else's kids. They just put it in there, you add the milk, you bring it to a simmer, and you're done. And that's what this looks like. And what right? spices did you add to this? I like chai. You know, personally, my brother loves chai. So it's like cloves, cinnamon, cardamom. Things that I really like, those aren't overpowering. There's clearly no black tea, but there is some cornstarch that gels everything together. And then you can do sugar or no sugar at all. It's completely up to you because you have cinnamon in here and you also have vanilla extract. Those two flavors or those two smells make you think that there's sugar in something. If you're, the, if you're wherever you are and you walk by a Cinnabon, you start to salivate because you can taste cinnamon on your tongue as you walk by. So cinnamon and vanilla those two things that, that you just think is going to be really sweet, okay? So you can do sugar or no sugar. It's completely up to you, right? And that's, I mean, that's that's delicious. And then you can put that in the fridge and make it ahead of time, a couple of days ahead of time for your guests, and you're good to go. If you got that sous vide, whoever it was, uh, either uh, Jersey or Washington State have asked about the salmon, 125 sous vide, you can make that ahead of time. You can have that in the fridge. All this stuff you can really make ahead of time and then and then have it ready. Um, you know, and with Mary Eve's guidance, we can all make it through and have delicious food and be as healthy as we can be. And and again, I can't thank uh, Debbie's Stream Foundation enough for hosting this, for all the sponsors that make this possible, for Mary Eve Brown and her, her time is really important. She is the magic eight ball that makes all this possible. Whatever questions I have, I know I can email her and she will give me the answers so that I can sort of guide, guide us through a different meal each and every time. And don't think this is the end. <laughs> For those of you with separation anxiety like me, we will be back here in August. And all these recipes are available. If you register for this, you will get sent a beautiful packet with all of the recipes from all years in the past too. So right. it's like, a, it's an incredible resource. It is an incredible resource. You will have it there hard copy right there in the kitchen with you, okay? So I apologize if you were writing all this down in pencil, <laughs> but, but if you register, don't worry about missing an ingredient because it will come straight to your door. And this uh, this uh, broadcast is also available not only on Facebook, but also on the Debbie Dream Foundation YouTube. So yeah. you're welcome to go there and rewatch. That's right. Cook there along are, if you want. There are so many different resources. You know, if I did something funny, you want to laugh again and again, 
They can scroll back, <laughs> watch me do it again and again and again. Okay. Melanie says it's an amazing event. Thank you both for all your time. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. It's, Nancy Brown, thank you. It's our pleasure. Yeah, truly our pleasure. And like I said, this isn't the end. If you have any other questions, you can email us. Uh, Sarah and I here in Austin, Texas, Chef Nathan Lyon. If you have any social media stuff, questions about anything, 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 and I don't know the answer, clearly Mary Brown and I will be on the road for our autumn tour across <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> Debbie Stream Foundation, stretch, bus, something. Uh, thank maybe. you, Loretta. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, thank you. Mary. Thank you, Debbie Dream Foundation, and let's, let's see you um, in August. Yeah, let's uh, let's hold for our sponsors because without them, we would. Yeah, stay tuned for another minute so we can um, see the sponsor slide. Absolutely, I will be here with you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Alrighty. <laughs>